Case 1. The patient has digoxin overdose and presents with syncope. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows bidirectional ventricular tachycardia. Bidirectional VT is a rare ventricular dysrhythmia characterized by a beat-to-beat -beat alternation of the frontal QRS axis. It is most commonly associated with severe digoxin toxicity. It may also be the presenting rhythm in patients with familial catecholaminergic polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, CPVT. Case 2. The patient presents with dizziness and shortness of breath. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows second-degree Mobitz type 2 AV block. Mobitz 2 AV block is a form of second-degree AV block in which there are intermittent non-conducted P waves without progressive prolongation of the PR interval. Case 3. The patient presents with ischemic chest pain and diaphoresis. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows a posterior wall STEMI. Posterior wall STEMI is suggested by the following changes in leads V1 to V3. Horizontal ST depression. Tall and broad are waves, greater than 30 milliseconds. Upright T waves, and dominant are wave in V2. Posterior leads refer to leads V7, V8, and V9. The degree of ST elevation seen in posterior leads is typically modest. Note that only 0.5 mm of ST elevation is required to make the diagnosis of posterior MI. Case 4. The patient presents with chest pain on arrival and is asymptomatic during ECG. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows Wellens syndrome, characterized by deep, symmetrical T-wave inversions in leads V2 and V3. These ECG findings indicate critical stenosis of the proximal left anterior descending artery, LAD. Patients with Wellens syndrome are at high risk of developing a STEMI within the next few hours or days. Stress tests are contraindicated in Wellens syndrome. Case 5. The patient presents with ischemic chest pain and diaphoresis. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows high lateral STEMI. High lateral STEMI is associated with a pattern of ST elevation caused by acute occlusion of the first diagonal branch of the LAD coronary artery. This ECG pattern is called the South Africa flag sign, which include ST elevation in leads 1, AVL and V2, and reciprocal changes best seen in leads 3 and AVF. Case 6. The patient is a CKD patient presenting with general weakness. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows tented peak T waves, which are tall, narrow T waves that have a pointed peak often described as looking like a tent. Tented peak T waves are a characteristic ECG finding in hyperkalemia. Case 7. The patient presents with ischemic chest pain and diaphoresis. What is the ECG diagnosis?
The ECG shows an anterolateral wall STEMI. Case 8. The patient presents with palpitation and dizziness. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows atrial flutter with 3 to 1 avenue conduction. Atrial flutter is characterized by a sawtooth pattern of inverted flutter waves in leads 2, 3, and AVF. The flutter rate is about 300 per minute. This is an ECG of atrial flutter with 2 to 1 AV conduction, with a ventricular rate of 150 per minute. Case 9. The patient is a chronic alcoholic presenting with frequent syncope episodes. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows torsades to points, which is a type of polymorphic ventricular tachycardia that can lead to sudden cardiac death. The ECG demonstrates a characteristic illusion of a twisting of the QRS complex around the isoelectric baseline. It is hemodynamically unstable and causes a sudden drop in arterial blood pressure, leading to dizziness and fainting. Common causes for torsades to points include drug-induced QD prolongation, low serum magnesium, low serum potassium, or congenital long QD syndrome. Case 10. The patient presents with ischemic chest pain and diaphoresis. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows inferior wall STEMI. Case 11. The patient has multiple myeloma and presents with an ECG with short QD interval. Short QD interval is defined as a QTC less than 0.34 seconds. What is the diagnosis? The ECG is compatible with hypercalcemia. The ECG findings of hypercalcemia include shortening of ST segment, shortening of QD interval, and presence of Osborne waves or J waves. Case 12. The patient is an old lady with chronic atrial fibrillation presenting with nausea and vomiting. What is the ECG diagnosis? Regularized atrial fibrillation and sagging of ST segments which resembles the Salvador Dali's mustache are ECG findings compatible with digitalis use. The patient's GI upset is likely to be due to digoxin overdose. Case 13. The patient is a young Asian male presenting with acute quadriparesis. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows prolonged QD intervals. The combination of prolonged QD intervals and quadriparesis in Asian males suggests the diagnosis of toxic periodic paralysis which consists of hypokalemia and thyrotoxicosis. Case 14. The patient is a CKD patient presenting with general weakness. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows a sine wave pattern which is compatible with severe hyperkalemia. In a sine wave pattern, the QRS complex, T wave, and P wave all merge together to form a single, smooth wave. The presence of a sine wave pattern on an ECG is a medical emergency. Treatment of hyperkalemia includes 
calcium gluconate, sodium bicarbonate, insulin with glucose, diuretics, and hemodialysis. Case 15. The patient is a homeless man found in a coma outdoors on a winter night. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows bradycardia with Osborne waves or J waves. These ECG findings are diagnostic of hypothermia. Case 16. The patient is an ICU patient with septic shock and unstable hemodynamics. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows a dome and spike ECG pattern called spiked helmet sign. Spiked helmet sign is an ECG marker of high mortality risk, which has been most often noted in critically ill patients with mechanical ventilation. Case 17. The patient presents with syncope and palpitation. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows a wide irregular rhythm, with heart rates approaching 300 per minute in some places, compatible with atrial fibrillation and pre-excitation, such as WPW syndrome. ECG features of atrial fibrillation in WPW syndrome include Irregular rhythm, with extremely high rates greater than 200 per minute, and in some places, up to 300 per minute. Wide QRS complex is due to abnormal ventricular depolarization via accessory pathway. Beat-to-beat -beat variation in QRS morphology and stable QRS axis, unlike polymorphic VT. The drug indicated to treat stable patients with atrial fibrillation in WPW syndrome is procainamide. Case 18 the patient is an Asian male presenting with syncope. He has a family history of the sudden death of his father at age 43. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows a type 1 Brigada pattern. In combination with his syncope presentation and his family history of sudden cardiac death, the patient can be diagnosed as Brigada syndrome. Case 19. The patient is a young man with major depression, presenting with drug overdose and seizures. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows several findings compatible with tricyclic antidepressant intoxication, which include QRS above 100 milliseconds, sinus tachycardia, terminal R wave greater than 3 mm in AVR, and dominant R prime in AVR. Case 20. The patient presents with progressive dyspnea and enlarged cardiac silhouette on chest x-ray. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows electrical alternands, an alternating QRS amplitude rhythm that is typically associated with the swinging heart surrounded by a large pericardial effusion. The large pericardial effusion can be demonstrated by ultrasound. Case 21. The patient is a young man presenting with upper respiratory tract infection, fever, and atypical chest pain. What is the ECG diagnosis?
The ECG shows diffuse PR depressions and ST elevations in multiple leads except lead AVR, which is compatible with acute pericarditis. Spotic sign refers to downsloping TP segments found in acute pericarditis, as shown in this ECG. Case 22. The patient is a 56-year-old man with acute dyspnea and chest discomfort. What is the ECG diagnosis? The ECG shows sinus tachycardia, an S wave in lead 1, Q wave and an inverted T wave in lead 3. This phenomenon of S1Q3T3 is suggestive of acute pulmonary embolism. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.